I don't think I ever consciously wanted to be an explorer. I didn't know what an explorer was. I just knew that I wanted to study fish, and it was when I went to the old aquarium at Battery Park in New York, and I, I just thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could spend the rest of my life studying fish and actually go in the water with them and see them underwater as you could, as I'd pretend I was underwater when I looked into the tank, especially the one with sharks. And I guess in order to do that, I would have to go out into the world and underwater, and uh, I guess that was exploration, but I didn't call it that at that early age. And my parents would say, well, maybe you can study typing and how to be a good secretary, and you can become a secretary to somebody like William Beebe. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? And I said, no, I don't want to be anybody's secretary. I want to do that stuff myself. I want to be like William Beebe. No, well, I was brought up in an age when Jaws hadn't come out yet, and uh, and I didn't think of them as, as vicious animals because they don't look like it when you watch them in an aquarium. They've got big teeth, but then so does your dog. My first encounter with a shark underwater was in the Palau Islands. Um, I was swimming, and along came a great big shark, and. I looked at it and it was just so beautiful and streamlined and it didn't pay any attention to me. It just swam by and went down the reef. Maybe it was seven feet long, maybe eight. But they look larger underwater. All things look about a third larger. And I was a little startled and then I was disappointed that it went away. And then later I learned to sort of crouch in the coral reef when this big shark was around if I wanted to get a good look. And I got once in the Red Sea, I saw this huge gi giant, the great hammerhead coming along all by itself along the reef and it was getting right. So I just made myself part of the reef. I hugged in and it came right by like that. You know, I hated to see it go away. Maybe it's communication to the to people. I mean, you could sit in your ivory tower and do any kind of research you want, but if you don't communicate with your scientific colleagues and the local people, you have to know what you're doing. And I guess that's what I'm so proud of, because Moat has developed into more than just a, an isolated little laboratory where people study fish, to a place where um, people can come and learn about fish, go visit the aquarium, and many of our scientists are lecturers. And I think it's important since the local community supports us that we give something in return. And that was Bill Moat's big thing. We have to give back from the sea. And the, the fun that we have fishing, studying fish, or anything that lives in the sea, we can't just keep it to ourselves. We have to publish scientific papers, popular papers. I've enjoyed writing for National Geographic, although most of my work has been scientific papers that the average person doesn't read. And then giving lectures and interacting and a place where children can come, schools can bring their classes. I think that's one of the most important things our laboratory does. And I'm very proud of it and I could have never handled it all in that small laboratory.